See, Nick Hundley is a uh, 10-year pro, um, played at the University of Arizona, and played under Hall of Fame coach Andy Lopez. And then uh, 2008, uh, went to the, the Padres, and then the, the Baltimore Orioles. Any Orioles fans here? All right. Um, the Colorado you. Rockies, and uh, then the San Francisco Giants. And, uh, you know, the average major leaguer plays about five years. And Nick is now 10 years, 10? Is it 10 or 11? 11. Yeah, yeah. yeah, almost 11 years. So that's it's incredible. And for a catcher, which is amazing. Catchers, they are always kneeling and, you know, and, and they touch the ball every single time. And so it's a, it's a wearing job at, uh, in the major leagues. Amy and uh, Nick, married, have two kids and uh, call San Diego their home. And um, you've been a big part of this journey as this church. And so some people ask me, how do you know Nick? Nick's actually a partner of, of Aspire. He's been a part of this even before we started. Um, when, when my wife and I loaded up our rider truck, Nick and his dad, Tim, were there, and you helped us. So I appreciate that, man. I was looking at some pictures of, of Nick uh, helping me pack, and I was worried that I was going to end his career if he fell or injured his, himself, and we almost had a little spill there. It was funny. I kind of pushed the couch a little too hard with you, but I appreciate you uh, just helping us as a church. Um, and you've been, you know, you've been a part of helping Aspire. Um, what interested you first, Nick, about um, a church in Tucson? Yeah, um, so like Brian said, I was real fortunate to get recruited by Coach Lopez um, to play in Tucson. I was uh, living in Seattle at the time, uh, wanted to get out of the rain and play in this weather, which was awesome. Um, so got down to Tucson. I met my wife here. Um, we were married by Richard Lopez, who runs the FCA at U of A. Um, so we have a lot of, a lot of great memories here. Um, and it was we were living in Las Vegas at the time in the offseason. Um, it was 2016, and me and my wife were praying about, we hadn't been back to Tucson in a while. We love the community. We were praying about how we can help Tucson community get back and give back to, to all that Tucson has given us. And the fir- after the season ended, um, the first church service, we went to Hope Church, where Brian was a pastor, and we were sitting there, and they showed a, a video, and I'm like, man, that looks like Tucson. And uh, me and my wife were, were sitting there hanging out in church, and they talked about planning a church in Tucson. And we're like, man, that's God's time. We've been praying about this um, this whole summer. So after the service, we went uh, uh, to the, the booth that was set up. I didn't know Brian from, from Adam. Um, never met him. Introduced myself, said me and Amy both went to Tucson or went to college in Arizona. I dropped out. She graduated. <laughs> but... Um, so we, uh, we met there and then just started the, the dialogue. And um, two and a half, three years later, we're sitting in, in Tucson talking to Jesus about, talking to you guys about Jesus. That's awesome. That's it's an awesome, awesome journey. How did, uh, you know, we we're talking in, in this passage about Nicodemus and Jesus. And, you know, since this passage, you know, billions of Christians have made that decision to, to follow. Um, to explain how, how did you become a Jesus follower? Yeah, well, um, I was real fortunate. Both of my parents knew who Jesus was, and they lived with that integrity. Um, I was baptized in California when I was 12 um, in Simi Valley. My dad was a football coach. He was coaching UCLA. Um, and so I knew, I knew Jesus when I was 12. But um, as my coach Lopez uh, had illustrated it, uh, and his, I don't know if you remember telling me this, but uh, he told me that he knew who Jesus was growing up, but he wanted Jesus in the corner over there, and that's how I felt. Um, I felt like I knew who Jesus was growing up, um, but I wanted him to, to be a little farther away, and I wanted to do my own thing and, uh, and live my own life. And um, it wasn't until uh, around 2012, and I'm very aware of there are worse things than struggling at baseball in your life, um, but... I actually was playing for the Padres. I got sent down to AAA, which is the equivalent of, you know, kind of being fired. And it, the AAA team for the Padres was in Tucson. So seven years after I left college, I'd been in the big leagues for four or five years. I was right back to where I started. And um, I called Richard Lopez, who married me and my wife. Um, and we just dug into the word. And I really started to, to follow Jesus and wanted to be with Jesus as opposed to, to kind of live my own life. So since then, the last seven, eight years has been, a, been an awesome journey. Wow. Let's talk about the journey a little bit. And you be as specific as, as you can because it helps us. I mean, 
I don't see any major league players out here. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, but, but it's tough for us to kind of, you know, figure out how that changed your life. But kind of walk through how does giving your life to Jesus, you're talking to somebody here that's not done it, how does that change your life? What are some things that happen? Oh, I think the two main ways that it changed for me were the way I looked at myself and then the way I dealt with other people, the relationships I had. Um, so first, um, before I really was following Jesus, my identity was wrapped up in, in baseball and my value as a person and what I could contribute was solely based on if I was performing well on the field or not. And I saw myself as valuable if I was hitting homers and you know, walking people off and, and people were cheering for me and, and my peers respected me. And um, you know, I would I'd feel, feel good about myself and be satisfied. But as soon as I wasn't playing well or I didn't have that, uh, you know, um, the joy from, from competing and playing well, I, uh, I looked at myself as, uh, as invaluable or invaluable, and my identity was completely wrapped up in that. And once I knew who Jesus was um, and really started to follow him, I really, um, God changed my heart and said, and you're my son, you're my boy, I got you. I want to live this life with you, and uh, no matter what you do, um, I want you to do it um, wholeheartedly for me. And I kind of, it really freed me up to play the game that I, that I love. Um, and then on the other side, in, in terms of relationships with people um, growing up, and there's some people that in this room that know me pretty intimately, and they'll probably attest this too. I would like the relationships that I built with people, mm. it was mainly based on what they could do for me or they were a stepping stone to a place where I wanted to go. You know, I would use those relationships um, either to help me get to the big leagues or, to, or they were uh, in the way of me getting to the big leagues. And um, since I've been following Jesus, my relationships with people have has completely changed. Um, I've really enjoyed getting to know people on a, a much deeper basis and, uh, and uh, much more servant attitude as opposed to my own narcissistic tendencies when I'm not with Jesus as what can you do for me, Brian, or stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. Um, since following Jesus, my relationships have, have really gotten deeper, and uh, I, I've enjoyed that a lot. Wow. You know, we see a lot of people in the limelight, whether they be, you know, in, in the entertainment industry or sports, and I've always wondered this. How do you, um, what, are, what are the challenges you face in the limelight as a professional athlete and a Jesus follower? I mean, you're on the road, I don't know how much, but what are the challenges you face? Yeah, um, I think one of the main challenges for us is, um, you know, what is important and what the world tells you is the truth and what Jesus tells you the truth. Um, and and it, it goes for every walk of life, I feel like. Um, in, our, in our sport, you're told that you, uh, what's valuable is gaining more fame, gaining more money, um, gaining more followers on Instagram, whatever it is, um, and that's your value and that's your worth. Um, so when I uh, when I realized that in 2012, my only my only goal was to be a big league baseball player, to be on TV, uh, to make money, to take care of my family. Um, you know, when I got those, when I reached those earthly goals, and my soul was definitely unsatisfied in that, um, my heart changed because I got to this point where I signed a contract and I expected like confetti to fall down from the ceiling and all, everything would change and I'd feel way better about myself. All the, all the goals I had set out to achieve, had, uh, I, I had reached those and, and my, I was not satisfied at all. Um, so when I realized that the, I bought in for all those years to lies that I was being told by our society, by the world, would, would, what would make me feel important, um, uh, I've, I've Thankfully, I got with a lot of people that knew Jesus better than I did, and uh, they helped me out in the, in, on my path and, and completely changed my perspective. That's awesome. What, what opportunities uh, now does this new life present? You know, as far as, you know, John talks a lot about light and darkness. And what opportunities now does this present? Not only for you, but maybe speak to them about what, what does it look like to be a light in, in, a, in a dark place? And I'm only assuming that sometimes you, you, you come into dark places, right? Um, how does this, how do, what opportunities do you have now in this new life? Yeah, um, prior to, to following Jesus, I was really concerned about my own kingdom and, and what uh, I could build my own castle 
and uh, what I could accumulate. And now that I have been following Jesus for a while now, um, one of my favorite life verses is Psalm 90:17, and it says, uh, "May the favor of the Lord rest upon you. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands." Mm. And I feel like I I want to get a tattoo on my wrist. Yeah. Uh, of both of that, but Amy's shutting that down. My wife said no. Uh, I'm still working, though. I'm still, I'm still trying. Um, but uh, in that process, um, I no longer, I, I live in that, at that address every now and then, but I live at the address of building the Lord's kingdom way more. Um, using my abilities, whatever God's given me, the talents that I have, however long I have in this game, um, whatever time I have after the game, um, Whatever I'm doing, I'm working to establish God's kingdom. Being here in Tucson, um, Brian is establishing God's kingdom here. So the favor of the Lord is on Aspire Church. The favor of the Lord is on Brian Hook. The favor of the Lord is on this congregation. And I feel like when I go out and I talk to my girls about why they're working it when they grow up, what they're doing, what their talents are, and why they're spending time at certain things, I want them to know that they're spending that time to establish the kingdom of God, whatever they're working for. And for us, um, it's been a, an awesome journey. Like doors have been opened up that I would never have thought would be open for us to, uh, to work for the kingdom. And I know that the relationships that I've built the last seven, eight years would be completely different if I wasn't following Jesus as if it, they were out that, that I am now. That's so. awesome. We've got, we've got some little leaguers here. We've got some high school. We've got some college athletes here. Um, you know, just in this last minute, uh, maybe just kind of summarize, maybe something to challenge them with. I mean, if you, were, if you were to do it all again and you were there, whether Little League, college, whatever, what, um, what advice maybe would you, would you give them as they're listening to you? And this could go to, to, to anybody here um, in life, but maybe those specific athletes that are, that are really trying to move forward. What, what would you say to them? Um, for me, I think it's a lot easier to work hard at a task that you're passionate about knowing that you're working for the Lord. Um, there's such a greater purpose and a greater cause than it is just for, to, to work for myself for my own kingdom. Um, and once I realized that, all my work going towards the game, I've enjoyed way more. Um, my marriage, I've enjoyed way more. Um, not to say that there's not ups and downs, because no matter what, I, that's what I love about Jesus in, in, in the Bible. He never lies to you. And uh, John 16, 33 says, in this world you have trouble, but take heart forever from the world. So he's not promised an easy road, but I know that it's a lot easier to get up in the morning and go work out in November and January to get ready for the season when I know that the work that I'm putting in is going towards the kingdom as opposed to my own kingdom. So yeah. I'll say uh, I wish... I knew Jesus sooner. I know I would have made a lot less mistakes. I know I would have treated people differently. And, uh, but at the same time, I'm so thankful for, for, um, for people like you, Brian. And yeah. I mean, this might be a long-winded answer, but I would also encourage you to get, get with people that know Jesus better than you, yeah. that have been living the life of a Jesus follower longer than you. I mean, there's people, I mean, Richard Lopez I talk to at least twice a month yeah. about Jesus. I talk to Brian. I mean, Coach Lopez I've called. Um, well, I got traded, I'll talk, got traded to Baltimore in 2014, the first time I've been out of the San Diego organization, and I was playing terrible, and we were playing the Yankees, and I'm like, man, these guys are going to trade me back to San Diego, they don't want me here anymore, and I called Coach Lopez from the dugout at Yankee Stadium, I said, hey, what do you got for me, this is what's going on, so get around people that know Jesus, and you can live life with, and, you know, I've, I've been very fortunate in, in, that, in that role, um, awesome. to have great mentors, so. That's awesome. Well, we, we, uh, we thank you. We thank you for coming here and sharing your heart and being a part of this. And we consider you a missionary of our church because you're out there. And here at Aspire, we don't, we don't think of just missionaries that are like, you know, the super Christians. Missionaries are every single one of us that's a Jesus follower wherever we are, whether it's sports or medical, wherever we are, we're all missionaries. And God has so chosen Nick to be in the domain of baseball. And, uh, and you need prayer. And so... Um, we didn't plan this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask Richard and Andy if you'd come up. Let's pray. Let's just gather around. Let's gather around Nick. And can we pray for Nick before he leaves here? Because, you know, he said he's going to come back, but he's not going to be here every week, right? 
So can we pray for him specifically? He blessed us today. Let's pray for him right now, all right? Let's do that. Coach, I'm going to ask you if you'd, if you'd pray, for, pray for Nick. Thanks, Pam. Father, again, we thank you for the honor, Father, uh, to meet with you. The same God that, that met with David in, in the caves of Adullam. The same God that spoke to Abraham. The same God that, that ministered to Joseph through this prison experience. Uh, Lord, the same God that gave those men faith. We pray, Lord, that you continue to bless Nick uh, with faith, uh, integrity, Lord, uh, wisdom, and strength, Father. Uh, again, Lord, we thank you for the favor that you have rested upon Nick. But, Lord, we thank you for the favor that you've rested upon us, that we can call you our Father, Abba, that we are a family of royalty, Father. Uh, truly, yeah. we don't deserve this, Father, but we thank you in every way, Father, for the gifts that you give us, Father, protection, health, provisions, Father, all these things, Father. Let us never take it for granted, Father, for you have given us things that we don't deserve. Uh, but above all, Father, thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for his death. Thank you, Father, for, for claiming our lives in you now through, our, through his resurrection. And, Lord, we continue to ask you to, to walk with us, each and every one of us, as well as Nick. Guide us, Lord, uh, and above all, Lord, uh, continue to make us aware, Father, of the blessing of being a child of the living God. Yes, In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hey, can we thank Nick for being here? Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you.